Most of you know the tragedy that my husband and I experienced while full-time sailing, which caused our sailing dream to be crushed and our boat to be put up for sale. We are finally at a point where we could leave the tragedy behind us and move on with life. But we are very different people who recover in very different ways, and if I'm completely honest, we needed some time apart to process what had happened and consider how we were going to move forward with life now that full-time sailing was no longer on the table. So, while Connor enjoyed some alone time, I joined a random sailboat on the South Island of New Zealand. But now, the trip was ending, and I was desperately missing Connor and our pup, Pivo. It was time for us to find a way to come together again for our future. And there was nothing that could get in the way of me getting home. Right? Cyclone Divey has caused widespread disruption across New Zealand. In some cases, gale winds topping 150 kilometres an hour. This is what something like 110 kilometres per hour of wind feels like and sounds like whipping through the superstructure of the Auckland Harbour Bridge. For our Northern Hemisphere folks, a cyclone is the equivalent of a hurricane, except hurricanes only happen in the Northern Atlantic Ocean and Northeast Pacific, where cyclones are formed over the South Pacific and Indian Ocean. The season typically starts around early November and goes through until the end of April. In an average season, only about half of the tropical cyclones reach mean wind speeds of at least 64 knots. By the time most of these systems reach New Zealand, though, they are normally no longer classified as cyclones, but they still bring strong winds and heavy rainfall. Northland and Gisborne are the most at risk for being affected in New Zealand. All right, so as sailors, we are used to plans changing, but I did not expect my plans to be changing with regards to a ferry. So I have plans to catch the ferry from Picton, which is on the top of the South Island, all the way over to Wellington, which is the bottom of the North Island. And then I was gonna spend a day with a friend and then take a flight from Wellington up to Auckland. And I just got a text message from the ferry company that there's a cyclone coming through, Cyclone Dovey, and they're expecting five meter waves. So they haven't canceled my ticket, but they warned me that I might wanna do that myself. Except I didn't buy a cancelable ticket. I only bought a changeable ticket. Now, one of the reasons Connor and I were able to make our sailing dream happen so fast at such a young age is because, well, other than when it comes to craft beer, we're cheap. I didn't want to pay the $100 change fee for my flight. However, I realized the real reason I was resistant to changing my flight is because I felt a sense of urgency to get home. Being in the midst of all the stress and sadness over the last eight months, Connor and I had both gotten so focused on our divides, and having parents living with us who were the most protective state made the divide even greater. But being apart gave us time to remember how much we've come together in the past and how temporary this tragedy thankfully was. I didn't know how we were going to come together, but I was pretty sure that we would. And the sailing ship had put life back into me to finally have the energy again to work on bringing us together. I've only been a little nauseated to date when I sail, so surely I could handle this ferry ride in order to see my family again, right? So, I'm leaving. It's been fun, Bye. right? Goodbye. <laughs> Good morning. So, it's the morning that I am going to take the ferry across the Cook Strait. As you can see, it is sunny here. It is crazy. Yesterday, it rained all day. The wind was freaking crazy. Wake up the next morning, it is calm as. I could fly the drone today if I really wanted to, but I'm in a hurry, so. The only thing I'm worried about now, though, is how is the swell on Cook Strait? Because it might be beautiful weather, there might not be any wind, but if there's too much swell, then it will still be an uncomfortable ride. So cross your fingers, it's not too big, or I guess cross your fingers is big because you're making a great episode, who knows, right? We'll see. Anyway. So I was a little worried that the roads would be blocked by slips or flooding or something like that, but so far it seems that we're good, so. Just gotta get to Picton. Be wound got her, I'm coming! So I've uh, checked in and time to get on the boat and see how this goes. Alright guys, I made it on the ferry, woohoohoo! And we're gonna take off here shortly. 
Um, apparently there are three ferries within the into Ireland or business and I am on Kaitaki which is great because Kaitaki has the best amenities of the three that are out there so here we go all crew to stations that's all crew to stations something smells delicious it's funny in the US I think we're used to gouging people when they on the ferries and things that are like hard to escape like you can't go anywhere else. We would gouge the prices so freaking high but there doesn't really seem to be a thing in New Zealand as much. Very reasonable prices on the ferry. That's where all the rich people go. mediocre so this is kind of cool I note right here there is two nappy changing rooms three there's four so they make it as a uh, parent friendly as they can I guess which is cool not for me but you know other people <laughs> entire floor is wet over here which just tells me that um, a lot of waves came over the boats. <laughs> I always think these life rafts that you see are absolutely crazy because they're massive and they just fly into the water. You can google some really amazing videos of them hitting the water but that hall is about the same size as Satori. Those are not small lifeboats so hopefully we don't have to deploy them. <laughs> I was pretty stoked. The ship was well equipped, the weather was sunny, and it seemed like we'd actually have a very pleasant passage. But I knew once we left the protection of the Marble Sounds, everything could change. You can't see out the window right now because it's a little bit too bright. But what's interesting about the Cook Strait is the fact that it connects two oceans, right? So on the northwest side, you have the Tasman Sea, and on the southeast side, you have the South Pacific Ocean. Now anytime two oceans meet, you, have, you run the risk of you know, waves meeting and tides meeting. But here it's particularly interesting, right? The Tasman Sea and the South Pacific Ocean run at almost exactly opposite phases, which means in one sea you might have the high tide and in the other you have the low tide. And as a result of these differing phases, the current between Cook Strait can run up to almost five knots. Now imagine this, five knots is almost 10 kilometers per hour. Satori's highest speed that she can go is seven and a half knots, which means if she's going against the tide here in Cook Strait, her max speed would be two and a half knots. If she's getting in trouble, she's not getting anywhere real quick to get out of the way. So I can see on Navionics that we are approaching the entrance to the Tory Channel and when we came in a week ago on a sailboat it was absolutely crazy so I'm curious to see what it will be like being on this big freaking boat will we even notice. For me, the craziest part about all of this is just how calm it is when a tropical storm just came through. You'd think we'd have much bigger residual waves, but it's, you can barely feel it on the ship, so yeah. starting to see some white caps in the water and some big waves breaking so yay going back out there it definitely doesn't look as bad as it was when we came in but um, yeah I don't know when you're in a tiny little boat it definitely feels big <laughs> this big boat is nice
All right, so we are just arriving in Wellington and we are about 15 minutes late, but that's about what I expected because we were 15 minutes late leaving from Picton. However, anytime you're sailing across bodies of water with currents rushing against you, plans can change and something you should just be aware of. If you're gonna take the Cook Strait Ferry, you might end up being late for whatever you're trying to get to. So I didn't make any plans around today because I was like, hey, just in case, just wanna make sure that uh, if I'm late, that's fine. Thank you for choosing to travel with into Rwanda. We look forward to you staying with us again soon. Wish you a safe and pleasant onward trip. All right, time to disembark. I would say overall, this was fun. It was cheap, 56 or $60, something like that. As it turned out, I was fine with the waves, but to be fair, not everyone was. Overall though, the passage was very comfortable compared to what I would have expected the day after a cyclone. I just got to Wellington, the capital of New Zealand, and I will say that traveling on the ferry was more like traveling on a luxury cruise line. You couldn't feel anything and there were so many amenities. And it's, I guess that's what Inter Islanders trying to sell it as, right? They're trying to sell it as an experience. You could always fly it across, but when you take the Inter Islander ferry, you're crossing some of the most notorious waters of New Zealand in comfort. And being a sailor that loves discomfort, well not love it, but I can put up with it, I would say it was still worth it. It was still so cool to be able to look over the banister and see the waves that only a week or two prior I had sailed through. So yeah, highly recommend it. Inter Islander between Picton and Wellington. You should do this experience for sure. It's funny how these things work. It was simply a ferry ride. I'll be at the day after a cyclone, but still, it was one more step on my path to pick up the pieces and recognize that a broken vase dished back together might be a different shape, but actually, it's a much more interesting vase. We need to have an intervention. <laughs> we found this under your dog bed, Pivo. You've clearly become addicted to brown crack. Or as the puppies are calling it, special bee. Yeah. <laughs> you're addicted, Pivo. And also, peanut butter is a gateway butter. Next thing we know, you're gonna be at the fire hydrant licking a pit bull's ass for more. <laughs> Yeah, but this one is sour, tart, with some blood orange and a hint of passion fruit. And Pivo, come on. When you're going through a kilo a month and you're hiding jars under your dog bed, you've got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> 